This year we got to see the sequel to last year's crazy horror take on the classic story of Pooh and his friends, Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2. It is unbelievable to imagine that this concept actually worked and not only that, but we're going to get a lot more to this franchise now with a third film already on the way. It has been stated that we will be getting a lot more in this franchise and that now has been coined the name Pooniverse. Other characters said to be a part of this nightmare includes Bambi, Peter Pan, the Mad Hatter, Sleeping Beauty and Pinocchio. With titles for most of these solo projects out there, there is going to be an Avengers-like crossover movie titled Pooniverse Monsters Assemble. Before things go absolutely crazy, let's dive into what happened to our beloved Pooh and this nightmarish take on the world of our beloved childhood characters. Before we go into explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Who is Pooh? A human in mask or an animal? It would be difficult to say, but Pooh and his friends' characters are inspired by A.A. A. Milne and English illustrator E.H. Shepard's Winnie the Pooh. While fans of these stories from their childhood might want to step back and take this with a grain of salt, these films depict a version of these characters as adults and crossbreeds who are on a killing spree. In 2018, we got to see Mark Forster's Christopher Robin film, where Pooh reaches out to an older adult Christopher Robin to find his other friends in the 180. Wood. The concept was primarily about how Christopher forgot about them when he got old as the trivialities of life occupied him. Pooh from this film might have taken it quickly but not the Pooh from the 2023 film Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey as he is rather furious about Christopher Robin leaving them. When the trailers first dropped for the movie, fans were confused about whether the characters of Pooh and Piglet in the film were just people dressed up in Halloween costumes going on a murder rampage. But the movie told us this was just a production issue, as these characters are supposed to be crossbreeds and not wearing masks. The sequel gave us a clear explanation resulting from experimentation with authentic human DNA infused with animal genetics. What does he look like? Fans of Pooh might remember him having yellow colored fur and being a bit chubby, always with a smile on his face. This appearance was supposed to be the basis for the horror take on the characters, but his appearance has changed over time. While the prologue to the movie doesn't give us a clear look at his appearance with its single color tone animation, we see him keeping with a yellowish color, but the fur is missing and his smile isn't even close to what we would remember as it looks pretty sinister. One cannot deny that his body structure is a bit bizarre as he looks more like Shrek than an adult bear, which could be explained by the crossbreed. Director Reese Frank Waterfield stated that even though he hates the word, these characters are supposed to be anthropomorphic. Piglet doesn't look much different from Pooh, except his horns are pretty big in comparison, and he is a murdering beast. Pooh's attire is very similar to that of the characters who appear in the woods as mass murderers, and we can see him wearing a red checkered shirt with blue overalls. And yes, we cannot miss the sledgehammer he tends to carry around to beat his victims to the pulp. What does Pooh Bear eat? The prologue to the movie shows us that Christopher Robin had discovered these crossbreeds and started bringing them fruits and all kinds of food. But as he grew older and stopped coming to the woods to meet them, they would stop getting food, affecting their appearance. Later, they would all gang up on Eeyore and eat him. Which makes sense, considering if Eeyore were still alive in this nightmarish take on the Pooh stories, he would have killed himself with a twister take on his depression. Killing and eating one of their friends is the primary reason that they turned against humans and decided to go on the murdering rampage against any human who comes near the 100 acre woods. But another thing we see Pooh eat that we have seen him eat before is honey. The very first time we see Christopher Robin return to the woods again, we can see jars of honey all over the place and there are times when Pooh is seen chugging honey before one of his gory kills. There's no particular scene where Pooh returns to his cannibalistic arc or eats anything other than honey. Does he bleed? Pooh undergoes quite a few moments where he gets beaten up and almost killed, but still manages to get back to his murdering rampage. But during one of these moments, we get to see him bleed, and when Christopher manages to crash a car on him, we see his injuries, while at the same time, there's some amount of fluff coming out too. While blood would explain his anatomy, the fluff makes it much more bizarre and nightmarish. When Pooh is hit by the car, we see him wake up a bit later, 
cuffing some fluff. There's no clear explanation for this since the sequel doesn't dive into the details regarding the fluff, but another interesting detail is that he seems to have bones too. When the gang of people attacks him at the end of the first film, we see one of them hit him on the foot and there's the sound of a bone breaking. Now we can be sure that the director put those details just to make us fear the fluffy poo toys that are quite the craze amongst kids. Does he have feelings? There are quite a few moments in the film where we see this nightmarish monstrous rendition of Pooh exhibiting feelings. Pooh is seen keeping Christopher Robin tied up even though Piglet had killed his wife Mary the very first time they got. This could be explained by him not wanting to give Christopher Robin an easy escape, but tortured him. But even then, Pooh doesn't torture as horribly as he does with his other victims. This might be a result of his attachment to him in his childhood, but his absence did have a gruesome impact on him. During the torture scene, as Christopher Robin tries to remind him of his past, Pooh has a breakdown and is seen touching his face, which might indicate that he is regretful of what he has become. Later, when we see Christopher try to stop him from killing Maria, who utters words for the first time and says, you left. This is the first time when we see him break the vow of his silence and it is clearly derived from the pain that he felt when Christopher Robin stopped coming to visit them. Besides his interactions with Christopher Robin, Pooh cares for his closest friends Piglet, Owl, Kanga, Roo, Rabbit, and Tigger. This was the only relationship that stayed alive even after he became a ruthless killer. When Alice starts beating Piglet with a hammer, Pooh returns to kill her with his machete instead of going after the two other girls. But before he proceeds to kill her, he fears that Piglet might be dead and shed some tears, which also seems to be honey. Is Pooh Christopher's brother? Backstory from the second movie. Interestingly, Christopher Robin was the only survivor in the two movies, and there is a reason to that. In the first film, we see that Pooh isn't killing Christopher right, instead he is torturing him. The sequel gives us a more extensive insight into the character when we find that Billy was Christopher Robin's brother and was used in the experiment that led to the creation of Pooh. Billy was kidnapped as a child when he was playing with his brother in the woods, and then his DNA was infused with animal genetics, which ended up killing them. Later, he manages to come back to life even though he is buried and that's when he starts to bond with Christopher with both of them unaware of their relationship. Pooh ends up killing all of his family members and finally faces Christopher himself. There are moments when it feels like the two comes to terms with the sibling aspect of their relationship but then Pooh returns to his newfound love for killing humans. How the F can he drive? Amongst the plot holes in the movie, the one that seems crazy is when we see Pooh drive a car to crush Lara's head with a wheel. He had a lot of experience driving except he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Even though it is pretty apparent the director doesn't focus on the details and just wanted to show us how brutal Piglet and Pooh can be to take the time to tie her up and run over her head with a car, but there could be a possible explanation to this since the duo seems very used to some human aspects of life and might have had a chance to drive a car now and then. Or it could simply be that he had gotten a chance to step on his father's wheel when he was a kid, and somehow that memory stayed with him. Whatever the explanation for his ability to drive, we can be sure that this only makes him a much more fierce opponent. Imagine thinking that you're as safe as you're moving away from the woods only to see Pooh hitting you with another car and making sure he kills you before you get another chance to get away. Pooh might as well go to the stuntman Mike way and kill his victims with his car only if circumstances get to that. Can he talk? The prologue for the first film indicated that the crossbreeds have taken a vow of silence along with killing every human that they come across, but there are moments when Pooh breaks his silence which is significant. For example, when we mentioned he only spoke two words as Christopher Robin tried to convince him not to kill the girl, but the second movie gave us a chance to see him talk a bit more. And now that we know that there's a third film on the way with many of his other close friends making an appearance, we can be sure that he will be speaking. The idea of not speaking makes for an interesting aspect of his horror villain persona and some of the most popular characters that he is based on didn't utter a single word in their movies like Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers. We will talk more about his connection with these other characters later on. How powerful is he? It seems that Christopher's childhood friends underwent quite an interesting training regimen as their physiques make them appear larger and built up. The characters have quite the effect on their enemy with a single move and doesn't seem to die even though they are hit on by a sledgehammer multiple times. Pooh uses his paws to break and slash quite quickly. We see him break the hand of one of the men in the gang who is trying to beat him up, but before that, 
he manages to slice off the face of one of the other men and the gang. While this might indicate his strength, we cannot help but wonder about the character's unstoppable aspect. He gets beaten up and then a car crashes into him, but he still manages to walk up to his victims and kill them. The trauma that he experienced when Christopher left him must be a driving force in all these developments and what he ends up being. But this is taking things a little too far, and this brings us to our next question. Is he similar to Michael Myers? Over the years, there have been a variety of movies that have explored the concept of a cabin in the woods with a murderer roaming around killing the people who visit there. However, only a few of them have been successful, and all the other such movies feel very much derived from them. Jason Voorhees and Letterface are prime examples of this, and yes, quite a few scenes from Winnie the Pooh horror movies indicates that he is very familiar with them, but the characters that feel closer to him must be Michael Myers from the Halloween franchise. Over the years, we have seen a variety of elements of the murderer from the Halloween movies, but the one thing that remains unchanged is that he is unstoppable. Michael Myers has been shot, stabbed, burnt and attacked in every other way, but he still manages to survive. Almost all of these things have happened to Pooh too, but then he didn't manage to survive the final attack in the sequel. But it seems that that won't be the end of him. Like in the Halloween movies, we see Pooh being brought back to life, which means that he will play a more prominent role in the sequel, with many of his close friends also returning. However, one thing might be different between him and Michael Myers. This is about the driving force between them. Pure evil drives Michael Myers, which is why he is unstoppable and appears to be immortal, surviving some of the most gruesome attacks, but then we never see him exhibit a single emotion through his mask, making him the most incredible horror character ever created. At the same time, Pooh is derived from this hate towards Christopher Robinson, which is why he often softens a bit when facing Christopher. This is the very point where we can see a difference between the two even though we can agree that they won't stop at anything to kill their victims in the most gruesome ways possible. Another point is that Michael Myers won't torture his enemies and waste his time on them, killing them right away. At the same time, Pooh tortured a lot of his enemies and found creative ways of killing them. Can he reproduce? It might sound like a stupid question, but the killer we just discussed actually had a child with Jamie Lloyd in the movies. Their son, Stephen Lloyd, was one of the only characters to survive in the Myers family. The same can be said about Pooh and his close friends since they seem to have some sort of understanding regarding themselves. As revealed in the sequel, they were a crossbreed between humans and animals, and this might mean that the mating trait of the human might pop at some point and play a significant role in the movies. With Pooh being their leader and a cinematic universe on the way, it won't be long before we see him die at the hands of his human enemies, but what if he finds a way of keeping his legacy? It has been shown to exhibit feelings and there is a chance that he might fall for someone who is as monstrous and brutal as him. But there are other ways of keeping a legacy too, since they seem to be aware of the fact that they were experimented on, they might just think about doing the same experiment on some of their victims. Over the years, we have seen quite a lot of villains planning to convert humans to look like them. And this is something the crossbreeds might think of doing too. It is a wild concept, but it's not as if the fact that we're discussing Pooh killing a lot of humans is wild enough. Is he immortal? The question that really should be asked is whether the crossbreeds are immortal or not. Michael Myers had had that immortal thing about him as he managed to survive attacks that should have killed him in the very first film that he appeared in. Pooh was killed at the end of the second film, but it seems that it would only last for a short while since Rabbit was seen taking him and the others in order to bring them back to life for the next installment of the franchise. This could be a result of the experimentation done on them since they were also presumed dead when the experiments first took place, but they managed to come out of their burial grounds. Let's hope there's proper reasoning for this since other characters like this have never really been explored how they managed to survive each and every attack. I mean, Jason actually ended up going to space and probably still managed to survive after killing most of the crew members in the spacecraft. However, not being able to answer all the questions regarding this character only makes it more interesting since this becomes the coolest plot development weapon. Marvelous Verdict Back when Disney was making live-action remake of all their successful animated properties, Saturday Night Live did a sketch about Bambi and his friends taking revenge for his mother. It was a hilarious sketch with Dwayne Johnson playing the titular character, but now it seems that this has become a reality and might end up being the plotline for the film. Given the way Reese Frake Waterfield is going for a franchise, while the original Pooh carried a lot of meaning behind his creation, we can only learn one thing from the Blood and Honey movies, do not 
not leave your childhood creations behind because they just might come back and kill you because you left them starving and without any purpose. You might miss the old Pooh Bear, but with the success of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, we can be sure that future generations won't share the same feelings. With the success of the sequel, we can be sure that these characters will return with a lot more fury and Christopher Robin should be ready. As always, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.